All right. Well, that leads us to our, our final question. One piece of advice for the listeners on any, any topic. You've got to be – really? All right. No. <laughs> no, I can't. It's the thing that scares me most, man. I, I, I don't know who's listening. Like if I talk about college or, uh, two, or trade schools or – I have no idea what people need to hear at any point in time. I, I, I think maybe part of – It's very humble of you, by the way, to, to have that reaction, you know. Well, I, I – I, or – People are dying for advice from you on anything. Well, I mean, let me think real, like, um, I, I, I don't think anything bad can happen from encouraging people to, um, to be uncomfortable, you know, to, I mean, it was, it, uncom it's uncomfortable to write a book. This chair is uncomfortable. This chair, right now, I, <laughs> I really wish I'd worn several <laughs> pairs of underpants, to be honest. It's sweaty. <laughs> I don't think it's real leather. <laughs> it's definitely not real leather. It's not. But, you know, given my spills with the bourbon, that's good. <laughs> it's not the itching. It's the chafing. Um, <laughs> no, I think uh, I'll go back to Frost, you know. I, it's, if, you can, if you can find a way to do a thing that needs to be done and then learn to love it, you win. If you love mm. a thing that needs to be done and you can do it, you win. Uh, I think maybe the great struggle is to is to crack that code in whatever your vocation or your avocation is mm -hmm. you get to figure it out and i don't know how much time you have to do it some people spend 90 years and they and they don't some people just seem to luck right into it i hate those people obviously <laughs> Those Jack all, Carr, we're looking Jack at Carr. you. Jack Carr. Oh, he only gave his life, you know, up and, you know. Yeah, but man, he knew he was good. He, not gave it, he risked it. He certainly risked it. <laughs> so the only two things I ever wanted to do was be a Navy SEAL and write best-selling books. Boom and boom. Well, screw you, Jack Carr, <laughs> and your whiskey. <laughs> well, man, good for him. You know, they're out there. And, yeah. and, and look, but that's why the advice is tricky, because you can find a guy like Jack, and you can say, see what you do. If you can sit down and if you can target Set it. Set your mind to it. Go yeah. for it. It doesn't always work that way. No, because one of the great truths in life is just because you love something doesn't mean you can't suck at it. Mm -hmm. And, you know. Nor does it mean you even have the opportunity to do it. Like, people need to put food on the table. You can't just say, I want to be this. It's like, well, that's not really going to pay, at least for like 30 years. Like, you've got responsibilities you can't do what you love do what you love is Look, not always takeable advice well it's i mean not to turn this into a whole joe rogan extravaganza but the short version is like the the best thing that happened at dirty jobs was like lessons from the dirt this alternative way of living emerged and it challenged conventional wisdom or at least it gave me a chance to and so to, to debunk a bromide, to, to challenge the idea, for instance, that we should always follow our passion, that's now become just, that's what we tell our kids. You know, you want to be happy? What are you passionate about? All right, how, how can we get that passion realized? And then you're down a road. Mm -hmm. You're down a road to mm -hmm. borrowing whatever it takes and to getting into the right school and so forth and so on. And then maybe when you get all your credentials in line and maybe when all of that works out for you maybe then you'll get the job or you'll find the the mate or you'll do whatever has to happen that will allow you to be happy and so i don't i don't think that's really the smartest way to go about job satisfaction or just happiness in general mm -hmm. look for the opportunities maybe they don't feel like the thing you're supposed to be doing I know this is true of writers. I know my mom wrote every day for 60 years wow. before she got published. Wow. Every day, Doug. Every day for 60 years. What a triumph at 80. And that she had a best-selling book at 80. Awesome. First book, right? So I, I don't, you know, I, I was just talking to my mom about this. It's like, what do you tell people? Like, when you want to encourage a writer to write, and you know that most writers are never going to make it, what do you do? Like, that's why I don't... People ask me every day, hey, I told him I've got a pretty good voice. How do I do this voiceover thing? Like, are you kidding me? I, 
you're not going to make it. I don't think the odds are so far against you. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know when encouragement becomes um, enabling, right? Misleading, right? Yeah, I, I, enabling, I, have, yeah. I, I have no idea. Yeah, but I, but I do know that once upon a time, Fred King told me something I needed to hear, and uh, I, I, I don't know if it was wisdom or serendipity that he told me at just the right time, but it changed everything. Mm -hmm. You got to find that that moment, that person.